Warehouse. Give me a song 9416 real quick, man. I seen some shit piss me off just now, bro. I looked on a brother showed me an app where on the app, it got all the occupants, all the gangs, where all the gangs is over here in, in Chicago. Who do that? It got it got areas. The area is not named after where the people live. The, na the area named after the gang, man. Our, our women, our children, our brothers, our mothers, and our fathers living in hell. We living in hell out here. You go over there, it's a gang that may not like you. Go over there, you can't wear a certain color. Them brothers over there go on with these brothers over here, black disciples over here, GD over here. Man, when we gonna wake up and repent and keep the commandments of God, man? Yeah. Read the Bible, bro. Psalms chapter 94, verse 16. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Which one of you brothers gonna man up and rise up against the evildoers? All the drug dealing going on in our community. All the gang violence going on in our community. All the corruption going on in our community. Prostitution going on in our community. Your mamas and your daddies can't even go outside. When the street light come on. When you gonna wake up and keep the commandments of God and stand up against all this damn evil going on in our community? When you gonna stop being scared of these little niggas with guns? We ain't scared of y'all with them damn guns. We don't teach the word of God. You better wake up, repent, and keep the commandments of God. Our sisters gonna stop dressing like whores too. Cover your damn body up. Stop showing your ass cheeks. Stop showing your coochie print. It's time to wake up and repent and keep the commandments of God. We tired of the oppression in our community, man. Read it again, bro. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Which one of you brothers gonna rise up and say, y'all niggas and gangs ain't scaring me no more? I'm standing up for the word of God. So what? So what if they threaten you? So what if they come up on you saying this and saying that? If you keeping God's commandments, you ain't got to worry about no evil thing. Right. Give me that Ecclesiastes 8 and 5. Because I know what it is. Y'all fearful. A lot of y'all fearful because y'all don't keep God's commandments, bro. Right. Your protection is when you right with God. Right. When you ain't right with God, yeah, you better be you better be scared. Right. But when you right with God, you ain't got to worry about nobody laying hands on you. We, when we go out and teach on the street, we not worried about nobody laying hands on We know why God sent us here. Right. Read that scripture, man. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 5. Whoso keeping the commandment shall feel no evil. What the Bible say? Whosoever keeping the commandment shall feel no evil thing. God said if you keep his commandments, you ain't going to feel no evil thing. Yes. The reason we worried, the reason we got them switches, hundred round drums, you got a gun, you got a gun, you got a gun, he got a gun, he got a gun, and all y'all riding together because you know somebody your own people might knock you off. Right. That's what you worried about. So you say, man, I'm in fear, bro. What am I supposed to do? I got to ride up under this flag so I can have some protection. I got to ride up under this flag so I can have some protection. Right. With God is your protection. Yes. You better keep the commandments of God. See, they ain't taught you God in your churches. You go to church, they say a hoop and holler and say pay tithe. You don't really know the God of the Bible. Right. Did, the God, did the God of the Bible not break Peter out of jail? Did the God of the Bible not break Paul out of jail? Did the God of the Bible not protect the Israelites when everybody came against them? When we was the smallest nation on earth and all nations hated us, did not God be on our side? So what you scared of a couple of Negroes with some switches for? What you scared of a couple of Negroes flying up under a flag for? Now it's time to keep God's commandment. Who gonna stand up for God? Read it again, man. Whoso keeping a commandment shall feel no evil thing. And a wise man heart discerned both time and judgment. So God said a wise man going to discern both time and judgment. You're going to know what time it is. Guess what time it is right now? We're in the last days. These are the most dangerous times on the planet Earth. Never in your life did you think you have to wear a mask to go get something from the store. Never in your life did you think you have to get a vaccination in your arm to try to fight off a worldwide deadly disease. That stuff you saw in movies. Now that stuff really happening in our time. Little boys, five, six, Six years old got guns. Look, 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 girls, three, four, five years old already know how to twerk, how to pop their ass. Right. That's right. wickedness. That's evil right there. Right. God hate that. Right. And we down here doing it and basking in it. Give me Ezekiel 22 real quick. I'm gonna show you yo, something. Let me yo, show you yo. Chicago in the Bible. Right. Let me show you Chicago, Illinois in the yo. word of God. Ezekiel 22, verse 3. Because y'all don't know God's word. Start at verse 1. What does God call Chicago? Come on. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 1. Come on. Yo. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, now thou son of man, will thou judge, will thou judge the bloody city? What the Bible calls Chicago? The bloody city. What the Bible calls Chicago? The bloody city. What God calls Chirac? The bloody city. This place full of blood. Yeah. Yeah. It's blood drenched all in these streets. They come with the pressure washer and wash the blood out. Am I right? 
Bring Somebody died, bust their head right here on the street. What they do? Nah, man, shoot. There's another nigga that died over there on the east side. Right. Hey, man, bring the pressure washer, man. And you'll never know somebody died right there. The Bible called this place the bloody city, but see, we are we see concrete. God sees spiritual. When God looked down, he sees blood. And the same spirit here in Chicago is the same spirit that was in uh, Cain back in the Bible in early in the Bible. You know what happened between Cain and Abel, don't you? What happened between Cain and Abel? What can what Cain do to Abel? Say it again. No, what Cain did to Abel. Remember them two brothers? Go to Genesis 4. Hold your finger. Genesis 4, real quick. I want you to read verse 10 only. Watch, this is what happened to Cain. This is what happened to Abel by his brother Cain. Come on. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 10. Bring it out. And he said, Thou hast done the voice of thy brother's blood crying unto me from the ground. You hear that? God said, I hear your brother's blood crying from the ground. When somebody died and their blood hit the ground, that blood is alive. That's why right. God used to tell us in the Bible, don't eat the blood of the animal. You're supposed to get all the blood out of it because the blood is the life thereof. Right. Same thing in us. Our blood that run through is what keeps us alive. You understand that? When our blood drip all the way out, what happened to us? We die. Right. That blood is alive. So when Cain's blood got entrenched in the earth, God said, I hear his blood. I know you killed him. Right. You understand? Guess what God's saying about uh, this city we live in right here? God hear the blood. He see the blood. He hear the cries of the people that was put to death unjustly by these damn gang members. God said, I hear the blood. That's why he called this place the bloody city. Read it again. Back to Ezekiel 22. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 2. On, now thou son of man, without judge, without judge the bloody city. Come on. Yea, thou shalt show her all her abomination. You see what God said we supposed to do? That's why we come out here and teach so hard. That's why we out here sweating, spitting. Yelling is because God tell us, tell the bloody city the abominations that they doing in the city. Come on. Yeah, right. They say, no, thus says the Lord God. Great. The city shedded blood in the midst of it. The Bible said, God said, y'all send blood out here in Chicago. Read. That a time may come and make its idols against itself. And you know what these idols is? Guess what these idols is? Your rappers. Your entertainers, your gangs, your idolatrous, your Islam. I seen the other day a whole bunch of brothers in Chicago is now flying up under Islam now. Islam, the second most bloody religion on the planet Earth, brothers and sisters. You, the Arab man is uh, enslaving black women today. They call them Ghana slate queens. Our sisters coming from Ghana, the Arab man flying into Dubai and taking a dump on the bed and make them eat the dump. Right, Make right. them have sex with uh with dogs. Right. BCA, that's going on right here in 2023. It's going on in Dubai right now. Right. The rich Arab man is just wearing all the damn stuff, driving in a Lamborghini or a Porsche. Then everybody talking about DJ Khaled. Tell me, I want to go out there. I want to take my black brothers out there to Dubai, see how we living. Meanwhile, you go behind closed doors, a black woman back there chained up with boo-boo on her face. Right. They making her eat shit. Y'all don't understand what's going on on this earth. Right. You're not looking because you're so worried about what's going on here in this city, watching your back all the time. Time, think you're gonna get killed. Right. God said, no, it's abomination going on here. Read. Right. They say, no, thus says the Lord God. The city shed a blood in the midst of it. Read. That a time may come and make it idols against herself to defile herself. God said, you make idols against yourself to defile yourself. You know what one of our idols is? Sports. Right. I played I played basketball on the highest level you can think of. And guess what my idol was? The the, the, the ball. Right. Because for the ball, you'll turn back on family. For the ball, you'll miss uh, very important family events because I got to go play ball. Guess what? You will break God's Sabbath day. Wow. God say every Friday sundown to Saturday, sun Saturday sundown is a day set apart where we ain't supposed to buy, sell, cook, or work. Guess what we'll do? For the money, we'll buy, sell, and cook, and work. Right. On that particular day, God said that's an idol in your heart. And that idol is causing abominations. And because of those abominations, we get killed out here in the streets right now. Right. Come on. Thou art become guilty in thy blood. What God say they are, what God say they is in, in Chicago. Thou art become guilty in thy blood. A lot of brothers and sisters don't understand. God got a universal law. You know what it is? God got a law if you kill somebody, what's supposed to happen? You got that Genesis 9 and 6? They don't understand. Our brothers don't understand. Why you think it's so much constant? It's like a constant rotation. You kill me? Okay. My cousin them gonna ride on you. They kill you? Okay. Your cousin finna ride on him. And it's just all, it's just a constant circle. Right. For you know what we all did. Read. Genesis chapter 9 and verse 6. Whoso shed a man's blood. If you shed man's blood. If you killing people in Chicago. Because some of y'all gang members, under the sound of my voice, know you done caught a body. Right. Know you done caught a body and then stashed the body somewhere. Yeah, I know it. 
We know exactly what's going on here. We the prophets of God. You ain't hiding nothing from us. Right. You out here killing people and you think you done got away with it. What the Bible say? Whoso shed it man's blood. Here go your warning right here. Read. By man shall his blood be shed. Somebody gonna kill you. Right. That's, right. That's what's gonna happen. Right. Somebody gonna kill you because you killed somebody. Because you done took a mother's son. Because you done took a father's son. You done took a father's daughter, a mother's daughter, a grandmother, an aged woman walking across the street. You done took her life. Guess what God said going to happen to you? A man going to take your life. Because you're not going to repent. You're going to keep on that cycle going. So God said, okay, bet. You want to keep that cycle going? Bet. Hey, John John, kill him. Because y'all don't know God. God controlled men. When God put the evil spirit on somebody to do some evil to you, you can't run, you can't hide. That's why when you read the Bible, the but God said he used to give people into our hand. Right. He would tell Moses, hey, you can go in that city, don't worry about it. I done given them into your hand. Right. You're going to win regardless. Right. And ain't none of y'all going to die. Right. So when God with you, ain't nobody going to be able to stop you. Right. That's what the Bible's saying right here. That's if right. you shed men's blood, by man shall your blood be shed. You better repent of that That's thing. Right. Go back. Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 4 Thou art become guilty in thy blood Thou hast shed That thou hast shed And hast defiled thyself and thy idols Which thou hast made And thou hast caused thy days to draw near This is why so much evil going on I'm from Jackson, Mississippi And Jackson, Mississippi and Chicago ain't no different It's just Chicago much bigger right. But a lot of y'all that live in Chicago That was born in Chicago Guess where your ancestors come from Mississippi. Right. All your grandmamas and great grandmamas, they might they left after the after the uh, uh, Emancipation Proclamation. They said we ain't we ain't working in the cotton field no more. We're gonna take take our turn in the north and we'll work in factories up north. Right. And they came up here to Chicago. That's why all y'all grandmamas got that country accent and made some good ass fried chicken. Right. Cause she from Mississippi. <laughs> all right, read it. And I the fall thyself and thy idols which thou hast made. And thou hast caused thy days to draw near. And God says, since we're killing and since we got idolatry, our days are drawing near. That's why so many young people are dying in these last days. That's what God trying to get you to understand. Come on. And are come even unto thy years. Therefore have I made thee a reproach unto the heathen. That's why people make fun of us. That's why they call us nigger, right. spick, right. wetback. You understand that? When they talk about us, they call our women hoes. Thoughts jump off, city girls. You know what I'm saying? Bring These are the out. thing. What's the girl from City Girl name that's dating um, uh Puff Daddy? What's her name? Uh, Carisha. Huh? Carisha. Carisha. She stand on camera. She said, I'm a whore. Right. The dude said, What that mean? She said, I'm a whore. He said, All right, well, what if your daughter wanna be a whore? Oh no, nah, she ain't gonna be no whore. Right. That don't make no sense. Right. Right. This is how she see you got wealthy being a whore. Right. Why wouldn't she want to get, make money like that? Right. That don't make sense. We're trying to break generational curses without dealing with ourselves first. And that's why our community's messed up. You got that? Finish that out for me. Come on. I'm about to be done. And they mocking to all country. And everybody make fun of us. They make fun of Chicago. I don't live in Chicago. But on the outside, living... Me being on the outside in, all I hear is bad things. Then I come see my beautiful brothers and sisters. I'm like, nah, these are the children of God right here. They just lost. I don't see killers and murderers and, and thugs and whores. I see brothers and sisters that ain't never been taught correctly. That's why we come here. They teach you correctly because we love you. That's why we put our lives on the line out here. We know what it is. But the Bible says what? We have become a reproach unto the heathen and a what? And a mocking to all countries. When I was playing ball in the world, I was playing with this, this white guy came up to me, he was from Russia, and he said, he said, hey man, um, can I sit with y'all? There's a whole bunch of black guys sitting down. I said, you can sit down with us. He said, he said, he said can I tell you something, you not be offended? I said, go ahead. He said, y'all black people cooler than I thought. I said, what you talking about? I ain't like the way he said it, you know what I'm saying? I'm from the South. You know, white people don't talk to us like that, you understand? We don't like that crap. He came up to me, he said, y'all black people ain't as bad as I thought y'all were. I said, what you mean? He said, I called my mama and told her, that black people in America ain't really as bad as they make them seem. I, ain't, I still not understand it because he's from Russia. He finally say, because he watched movies like Boys in the Hood. Wow. You understand? He watched movies like, uh, or watch show like Gangland, stuff like that. So he see us over here. Only only thing he know about black folks is we kill each other, our women be showing it, twerking it behind, and then we do drugs. So in his mind, he said, oh, oh y'all evil as hell. Then he come on here and see us like, nah, man, y'all smart, y'all athletic, y'all beautiful, y'all intelligent. Y'all ain't what I thought y'all was because the world paint a picture of the black man in a certain light. They never show us taking care of our wives and kids. If they do, our wife got to rule over us. You understand? She sit down while we all stand up. You ever seen that? The family portrait, the mama be sitting down, everybody be standing around the mama. That don't make no sense. Them baby came out of me. 
I had the babies in meat for uh, 20 years. You understand what I'm saying? You know that, right? She get the baby from you. That baby come from you. You made the baby. It just grew in her stomach. You understand what I'm saying? That's what the Bible said. So the Bible telling us we all out of order. We all jacked up because we don't know who we are. That's why I say everybody mock us. Everybody make fun of us. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, but the Lord shall lead thee. God said we become an astonishment. People watch world star hip hop to see us do evil. Don't nobody watch world star hip hop to see no white girl put on makeup. <laughs> they watch world star hip hop to see Negroes killing each other. Right. See us get into a fight, somebody holler like, world star! Right. Pull out their phone, everybody start recording. They watch us, they are everything. We are the commodity on this earth, bro. Even when you go overseas, they listen to our rap music. You got little, you got little young Chinese boys putting fake dreads in their head with, with blonde tips on. They want to be like us. Right. You understand? But at the same time, they don't want our conditions. Right. They don't want our struggle. Right. They want to look like us because it's cool. They want to dress like us because they, they know we the best. But they would never trade places with you because they don't want to come live here. They don't want to come live back over here because they know the hell we got to go through. You understand what I'm saying? That's why the Bible said we have become an astonishment and a proverb and a byword among all these nations. They all mocking us. Guess what? What's your nationality, fam? Your race. What's your race? African American. Okay, what about you, sis? She said she is Israelite. What about you, fam? African American. What about you, fam? Israelite. Okay, what about you, mama? That's right. African American. All right, who conquered Africa and gave it his, gave it his name? White man named Leo Scipio's Africanus. He beat a black man named Hannibal in the Second Punic Wars, and he named the continent of Africa after him. His name was Africanus. He named the continent Africa. Who named America? Wake him up, Cap. Another, another white man named Amerigo Vespucci. So Africa named after white man, America named after white man. And now they call us African American. Some, some white boys in my job, they were born in South Africa. If I call them African American, they'll lose their mind. What you mean? I ain't, I ain't no African American. But you from Africa and you live in America. What the hell you talk about? But they don't they don't look at themselves like that. That's the name they gave us. Now when you read the Bible, the Bible say the so-called African Americans come from the tribe of Judah. Now when you look up the name Judah, it means God's praise. This these people right here, all they hate all of us. But they hate us the top. They hate us the worst. Because they know. Through the prophecy, everybody gonna learn from us. Right. Judah gonna wake up first, teach everybody, and all of these tribes gonna wake up and start doing the same thing we're doing right now. That's and that's what they're afraid of. So guess what they do? Put homosexuality in our community. Put gun. Hey, you can't have guns in Chicago, right? So how do these little Negroes get the guns? No gun stores. No bullets. But somehow everybody got a switch. Everybody got a hundred round drum. Everybody got a Glock 17. How in the hell are you getting it? Because that white man put on them railroad tracks back there. And you go and they open up that railroad door, you look around, you say, damn, there's a whole bunch of guns up in here. Let me get that You understand what I'm saying? So we ain't the one doing it. Guess what? We ain't got no boats to go to Columbia and bring the coke over here. You understand? We ain't got no dispensaries in the middle of our... Ain't no, ain't no old block dispensary. Ain't no, ain't no place in the middle of old block where y'all growing weed, uh, sour diesel, kush. I used to dress, smoke all that crap when I was, you know what I'm saying, when I was in that day and that time. Purple haze. I was doing all that, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't know no better. But then when you learn, buddy, like, okay, that's destroying me and my people. Well, I said, you got Isaiah 1 and 3? Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. Yeah. So a couple of y'all said African American. Two people said Israelite. Watch this. The earth. No, if it's owner. So an ox, a dumb animal. He can't think like me and you. Two plus two, he don't know nothing about that. All he do is eat, boo-boo, and, 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 and walk, walk around. Go ahead. And an ass, his master's crib. Same thing with a donkey. A donkey know where his homeland is. Right. If you take a donkey 10 miles down the road, he going to find his way back. Go ahead. But Israel. But the Israelites, God's chosen people. Go ahead. Do not know. We don't know. Go ahead. My people do not consider. And we don't even consider that we the Israelites. We don't even consider, you hear me, bro? We don't even consider we God's people. We don't know. Ain't nobody ever told us. So guess what we do? We go with the generic answer. African American. Black. But hell, my pants black. Ain't none of y'all this color. I done seen people this color. They ain't our people. Trust me. You understand what I'm saying? They Hamites. Not low to Hamitic tribes. So why we call ourselves black and why we call ourselves African American when it's not biblically accurate or historically accurate? Because we don't know. That's what this Bible is saying. 
we don't know, ain't nobody ever taught us. Now the prophets has come to teach us again. That's what we come here for. We ain't come here just to put on no show. We come here to edify you, plant that seed, and hopefully it'll grow, and you'll be able to come to get more wisdom. That's why we give y'all flyers. If you can't stay for a long time, here, bro, take a flyer. Learn about who you are, right? Now, how we get over here, family? How black people get to America? A boat. A boat? I, 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 I like that. Was that boat meant for people, or was that boat meant for cargo? Yeah, it was meant for uh, rice, beans, oil, things like that. Somehow, they found a way, give me a pat this real quick. Somehow, they found a way to stuff hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Negroes in there. See, the ship was made for this right here. That's the cargo. They said, the hell with that. We can make more money out of these niggas. Let's put them on there. They put the men, the women in the front, the men in the back, and they had the little boys right there in the middle. And guess what? If you had to take a dump, it wasn't no, hey, excuse me, Mr. White Man, could you come down here, unchain me, let me come up there and use your toilet? Hell no. Nah. He said, nigga, take a dump right there. Right. And guess what we did? We took a dump right there right. on top of the brother that was up under us. Right. If a woman had a menstrual cycle and she was bleeding that month, they didn't give her no tampon. You crazy? No, she bled on top of everybody. Right. Women had children on top of everybody. Right. They say, for instance, the woman, she can't help herself. She had a baby. She forced the baby out, and the baby fall between the chains. And people moving around trying to get the baby, but they can't. And that, and that chain wrapped around that baby neck. What you think happened to that baby? That baby died. Wow. That baby lived a, a total of one minute. And the white man didn't come down there immediately and get the baby. He let that baby sit there for months and months at a time. Then he finally came and got the corpse. Then he threw it out. So imagine the smell down there, bro. We went through that. That's wow. us. And why we go through that? Read that for me. Deuteronomy 28, 15. Why we go through that? Because ain't nobody else go through that. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Yeah. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. I said we didn't listen. To observe to do all his commandments. If we didn't keep his commandments, y'all. Go ahead. And his statutes, which I commanded this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So God said if we didn't listen, curses will come upon us. If we didn't keep his commandments, curses will come upon us. Let me show you a curse. Verse 68. Come on. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. God said he's going to bring us into Egypt again with ships. The that word Egypt means what? Slavery. Egypt means slavery. How you know? That, that, that's it right there. Nope. Give me this sign right here. Let me show you how you know. Flip that over me. What the hell a pyramid got to do with America? Bring it out. Why, why the white man put a pyramid on the back of the dollar bill? For what? That's God showing you in these last days a sign. You in Egypt right now. That's but it ain't the Egypt that they was in back then. That's it's a spiritual Egypt. Right. That's why America got the, that's why America got this on dollar bill. You've been to Memphis, Tennessee. Pass right down the highway going to Memphis, Tennessee as you go over the bridge coming from Arkansas to Tennessee. Right on the left hand side, you'll see a big old pyramid. Memphis was the name of the capital of Egypt. Right. They ain't, bro, these folks ain't stupid. They're doing this to us. They just knew as long as them Negroes destroyed, as long as they killing each other, popping pills and doing perk and molly and uh, promethazine, they'll never wake up to know that they in spirits of Egypt. Right. I got them niggas food. They good. Oh, give them white Jesus. They'll, they'll, do, they'll do whatever I say you give them white Jesus. Right. Look at my our grandmamas. Our grandmama done put the pastors, pastors, pastors kids through college. Right. Grandma done paid the pastor bill for 40 years. Right. right. She been in there 40 years, giving $100 a month, $100 a week. And he got thousands of women doing that because they deceived. They don't know no better. So now all his kids do college. You understand what I'm saying? Got the degree, degree. They lawyers and doctors. We'll never come back to this side of town. But Grandma's still living on the top Egypt. floor. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. God, so I'm going to bring you into slavery again to America. But this time it's going to be on slave ships. Who went into slavery on slave ships, King? Who went into slavery on slave ships? Who was on them ships? Your ancestors? Yeah. So God said it was going to happen to the Israelites. That happened to you. So who that make you, bro? Who that make you? If God said in the Bible it was going to happen to the children of Israel and it happened to your ancestors, then who does that make you? You can't be African American. Because there ain't no book that say that happened to African Americans. The book said it happened to the Israelites. And it happened to your ancestors. So who that make you? Damn right! Damn right! You see how easy that is, bro? You've been here 10 minutes, bro. And you've been going, you may have gone to church, I don't know. You may not. 
I've been in church my whole life. I ain't know that. I learned, I learned more from these brothers in a 10-minute session than I learned from the church in my whole life of going there. Because the church ain't got the spirit of God. It's meant to keep you deceived. It's meant to keep you docile and keep you distracted. But when you ask to read the Bible, you start saying, hold up, man. It's too much in here. It's too much in here talking about me and my people in a positive way. But we broke God's commandments, so he punished us and put us on slave ships. Right. Read it here. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. On slave ships, go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Moses was a prophet. The prophets of God was all black. And when they said something in the future, it happened. Go ahead. Thou shalt see it no more again. We ain't seen Egypt again. Go ahead. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemy. What happened when we got out of slave ship? And ye shall be sold unto your enemy. Flip this around for me real quick. You got me, Cap? Look at it right here, y'all. It said you shall be sold unto the... Watch this, y'all. Hold it up for me, Cap, over your mind. It said you shall be sold. Look at this right here, bro. My brother right here. To, to be sold. One On Thursday, the third day of August, a cargo of 94 prime healthy Negroes. The Bible told us way back then. We was going on slave ships, and when we got out the slave ship, we was going to be sold. $1,200 to $1,250 for Negroes. Sold on auction blocks. Sold a daddy to him, sold a mama to him, and may let them keep the baby. Or they may choose to say, nah, we're going to keep the baby with our nursing mothers, and when she's old enough, we'll let all the, 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 the big bucks on the uh, plantation rape her. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. What's your name right here, family? What's your name, family? Lex. Lex? All right, what up, Lex? My name is Gedaliah, bro. So what we out here teaching is we showing our people who they are according to the Bible. When you read the Bible, we went into slavery on slave ships because we broke God's commandments. You understand what I'm saying? And now we come to teach our people to stop breaking God's commandments. Right. Meaning stop smoking. Right. Stop killing your brothers. Right. Stop getting, not stop drinking until you drunk passed out. Right. There's nothing wrong with drinking. That ain't a sin. The sin there you go. The sin is when you go, 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 and you in middle passed out. You understand? Pissing in the hallway. That's what the Bible talking about. So you can drop that for me, bro. So this is what the Bible talking about, man. We went into slavery on slave ship for breaking God's commandments. He got, he made us be sold to the so-called white man, our slave master. Guess why God did that? Because we've been disobedient, y'all. So now guess what we're supposed to be doing in these last days? Guess what we're doing in these last days? Repenting and keeping the commandments. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. Listen to this. Lax, listen to this, Lax. Listen to this. Deuteronomy 10, verse 12. Hold on, for you, hold on for you light it up, man. Come on, man. Don't defile your temple in front of us, man. Don't defile your temple in front of the prophets, man. Now, yeah, you go on. You can't do that. You're going to tear your lungs up. Why would you kill yourself? You might as well put a gun to your head. You just, you just doing it faster. <laughs> you feel me? Like, somebody's smoking. Y'all finna go help my Y'all want to bring this congregation to the county and say, y'all come talk to my brother. I'm finna go bail out right now. You finna go bail your brother out? Right now. What do you do to go? What do you do to get in there? Exactly, exactly, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. We go to the jail all the time, bro. We got a jail ministry. We always in the jail teaching our brothers. We teach our brothers to stop breaking crime so they won't go to jail. But let me give you 1 Corinthians chapter 3 real quick. You got to stop smoking. All of us had to stop smoking. I used to smoke blunts too. Black and mild too, but you got to stop. Why? Because it's killing your lungs. What's the difference between somebody that smoked a black and mild a day and somebody that put a gun in their head and killed themselves? The black and mild gonna just do it slower. That's all that is. You understand that, sister? You understand that, sister? You've been listening for a while. Don't let nobody pull you away now. All right. Well, hey, you got a flyer, right? You got the address on the back of the flyer. You're gonna give us a call. All right, sister, come learn now. What's your name? Sister Jasmine. Come learn, sister Jasmine. All right, 1 Corinthians 3 16. You smoke, bro? All right, good. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. The laws come out, they get to running on yeah, Though you not, then you are the temple of God. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. So God don't want us defiling our temple. Because we the temple of God. His Spirit is trying to dwell in us. That's called wisdom. God's wisdom is trying to enter into us. If you smoke, get drunk, get fornicate, eat pork, shrimp, and lobster, it's going to disconnect your wisdom from God. Right. You're not going to be able to fully understand or receive God's wisdom because you're intoxicated. Right. He don't want us doing that. Right. Read. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Him shall God destroy. I'll give you an example. 
if you got ins insurance on your car, right? Say you got insurance on your car and something go wrong with the car and it's not of your own doing, the insurance will take up that liability, right? But what if you do something to your car on your own purpose? What are they going to do? Are they going to pay for it? God, the same way. You defiling your temple and you get cancer, God not going to hear you from that. You understand that? You defiling your temple and you out here, you get an STD like herpes, HIV, gonorrhea. God ain't healing you from that. You got to go run to your slave master for a pill. You understand what I'm saying? Because God punished us for being disobedient to his word. That's why the Bible say this. Read it again. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Y'all hear that, young brother? Young sister, you play basketball? Come out of us real quick. I used to play ball too. Come on over here, young man. Come on over here. What's up? What's your name? Huh? Jermaine, my brother. What about you? What's your name, family? Lamia? Damien. Damien. Okay, I'll praise. What's your name? Demaya. Okay, y'all family? Okay, I'll praise. So what y'all know about God? What you know about? Him? You gotta know something. A little something. You always believe in God? Alright, what you think? He created us and our Savior. Okay, this our Savior right here? Is that Jesus? You say yeah? What about you, Demaya? Is that Jesus? You, or you don't quite know? You don't know? Okay, so the pictures you've seen of Jesus, do they look like that? Like those? They do? What about you, mama? Is that Jesus? You say yeah? You sure? So what if I show you what he, if I'm, listen, if I want to learn about Jesus, where I got to go read? Because that's where his original story is, right? right. So would the Bible tell me what color he is? Yeah. Right? Revelation 1, 14. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hands were white like wool. So what is wool? What kind of hair texture is that? Yeah. Like your hair. Your hair is wool. My hair is wool. If I took it out of these braids, it'll be a fro. If her hair, the air fro puff right there. That's called wool. Same thing with my sister hair. Same thing with his hair. You might have it low cut. Little man hair. Little mama hair. That's wool right there. Pure right. wool. Right. That's, that's the hair Jesus got. Who got that type of hair? Thank you. Read. As white as snow. And when a black man get old, real, real old, what happened to his hair? It turned what? It turned white. Right. Right. We say Some people say gray, but it's actually white. Right. Go ahead. And it's us where it's a flame of fire. You know, see somebody drink wine or liquor. What happened to that white part of their eyes? The veins start showing and their eyes turn. There you go. So Jesus Christ drank wine. Right. Go ahead. And it's feet. Like unto fine brass, as if they burn in a furnace. What color is brass? B-R-A-S-S. -S. Brown, right. So if something's brown and you put it in a fire and it get burned real bad and you pull it out the fire, what color does it turn? Whoa, wait a minute. We just read in the Bible that Jesus was a black man. You saw that sense? It said his feet like fine brass if it burned in the furnace. Now hold on, show me that picture. So which one of these look more like Jesus? This one or that one? That one over there. So now wait a minute. I gotta ask another question. What color is God? I know you gotta leave with your sister. What's the, what color is God? He gotta be, cause Jesus is son and he looks just like his father. Right. You understand that? This is what we need to be learning. This is what we need to be teaching our people. What's your name, sister? These your children? These are little sisters and brothers? No, it's my small sister. Oh, okay, 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 you babysitting. Okay, all right, I got you, I got you. But are you married? Why not? Oh no 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 no! We gotta we gotta get into this. We gotta get into the psyche now. So you got a baby. That was okay, but you didn't have a husband. That ain't okay. Nah, you know that what you were made for, don't? That's why women were made. They were made to have children and to be married to a man, a righteous man. That's the way it's supposed to be, sis. So you laid down with a man, had a baby, but he wasn't good enough to marry. So why you have a baby with him? You see what I'm saying? You can't let lust control your mind. Wow. You understand what I'm saying? We got to get our community back. Because sometimes you've been by yourself with that baby and it's been hard, ain't it? It ain't supposed to be like that for you. Right. Your husband's supposed to be there providing for you, taking right. care of you, protecting you. Right. You don't have that at this particular right. moment, but you can have that. Right. But in order for you to get a godly man, get what you got to become. Uh-huh, you say, okay, you ain't, you ain't answer my question. In order for you to get a godly man, what's much you, what must you become, my sister? Let me read it to you. Let me read it to you before you leave. Let me just read the scripture to you before you leave. Before you leave. So rock, you know what I want, 26, 30, 26, 23. Read it up. 
I'm not saying you gotta get married. But what I am saying is, if you gonna continue to be intimate, hold on before you leave, little, little, little king, let me show you something. But if you're gonna be intimate, I mean, you're gonna have sex. The next person you have sex with need to be your husband. Right. That's because right. if not, you can end up with another child by another man That's that right. ain't in his life or her right. life. Right. And then you make it hard on yourself. Right. See, God give you the keys to have a successful life. Right. We go against that. You understand what I'm saying? Watch this, read. Ecclesiasticus chapter 26, verse 23. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. So if a man leave you, or don't provide for you and your child, or has sex with you, put a baby in you, and don't marry you, God said that's a wicked man, sis. You understand that? Right. But wicked men, wicked women attract wicked men. Right. So what is God telling you about yourself? If you got a wicked man in your life that don't want to do, won't, ain't no good, and treat you like crap, then what must he be? What else, sisters? Y'all want to get in this conversation? Your wicked man, okay, well, that means your mama was wicked. If your daddy wicked, that means the woman that he laid with and had a baby with wicked too. If, okay, good. So you at least you're being honest. So now, if you got a wicked man in your life now, what that mean about you? That, there you go. No, I ain't say because your dad ain't here. Because you can change. You can get right with God. For repentance is open for us all. You think we all grew up righteous? Hell no. You think we always keeping God's commandment? No, bro, I was not keeping God's commandment. I was doing some of the same evil y'all doing. What changed me and my brothers? Keeping God's commandments. What is the nation? Yeah. 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 Yeah.